at night. <laughs> Welcome back. I remember when I was a kid pedaling my bike like crazy after school, trying to make it home in time to watch the Stooges with my brother. It was like a daily ritual. We used to slap each other senseless. Well, we had some fun, and uh, I get the feeling that we weren't the only ones. The person who turned me on to the Three Stooges was my big brother, Peter. Um, and it was, I, I really look back at it so fondly as some of the best times that I shared with my older brother. Because it was a time right after school where we would run home from school, we would sit in the den and turn on the Three Stooges, and we would laugh. Cheese. Come on, Larry, the cheese. Just a minute. Some cheese. All right. Mo, Larry, the cheese. Here. 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 I remember that a good day was determined by which Three Stooges shorts were on that day. Like if it was two curlies and a shemp, it was an excellent day. Separate two eggs. Stand aside. Let the guy know how to knock, 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 knock. I'm through being scared of your phony spooky business. <laughs> Why? Go! Oh! 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 When I grew up in Atoma, Iowa, which is a small town, we had one television channel. We had the Stooges on, which were after school. So me and my brothers would run home and, and watch the little Stooge show. And I had four younger brothers, so that made me mow. Oh. My brothers got so good at doing this, you know, because of that. And then eventually they all needed glasses because of that. But still, it was a great time to be an older brother. I'm the boss and I want you to stop falling off of the scaffold. Can I help it if I was born dizzy? I'll dizzy you. Oh, I didn't do nothing. That's why I slugged you. Do something. I missed. I didn't. <laughs> oh, 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 Mo, Mo, I can't see. I can't see. What's the matter? I got my eyes closed. Oh. I remember one time on the school bus, so I actually did poke uh, a girl in the eye. <laughs> Claire Ann Lascuto. I think it was Pammy Cochran. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I don't know why. I never did that sort of thing, but I, you know, she wouldn't move or something, and I just thought, uh, well, you know, poked her in the eyes, and uh, oh, God, did I get in trouble. Why? <laughs> our sisters use this to, you know, appeal to our mother. They shouldn't be able to watch it. They're going to poke us in the eyes. I remember our father stepped in, let them watch it. For God's sakes, it's the Stooges. And, uh, <laughs> We won that battle. Well, I'm glad cool heads prevailed there in the Fairley household. But you know, we weren't only watching the Stooges with our families. They were also a kind of family. The three Howards, one Fine, one Besser, and one Dorita were really all brothers in their shared pursuit of laughter. On screen, these brothers in jest did almost everything together. They worked together. They played together. Cut the cards. They ate together. Wait a minute. You said you were going to divide everything equal. Oh, ungrateful, eh? Yeah. We get a half a slice of ham and a half a egg apiece. You get a whole bowl and a whole eggshell, and you a squawk them. I'm sorry, Mo. Gee, you fellas are swell to me. They even slept together. <laughs> And only the closest of pals could have developed the trust necessary to hit and be hit. Hold it. I got an idea in the back of my head and it won't come out. Help me. Oh, more, more. Face. Oh. And if their routines seem painfully realistic, 
Well, looks are deceiving. What happens now? This. As Mo explains in this rare piece of footage. You don't really hurt each other. No. No. no Can you show, don't. for instance, now what do you do when you wrestle his nose here? What well, look, actually. Wrestle his nose. What do you mean, wrestle? <laughs> well, well, here's you know. what he means. Now, ordinarily, someone might think there's an element of violence which is created in my expression, but actually, my. And my, his expression. Now, hold your head still. <laughs> Now, my finger actually winds around loosely, but in the speed it's done with. Like this finger thing here, I never go near the eyes. It's way up here, but in the speed of it, it looks like it is in the way he takes it. Off screen, the guys remain remarkably close, as these intimate home movies of Curly's wedding day made clear. And here's a look at the Howard's proud parents, Saul and Jenny Horvitz. And while it may have been hard for our parents to believe, the Stooges were all devoted family men. Here's Mo and Shemp clowning with their kids, Stooges in training. You know that Curly and Shemp Howard replaced each other in the Stooges, but did you know that there was one time, and one time only, when they appeared together on screen? Here, in an uncredited cameo from Hold That Lion, Curly rejoined his brothers for one last classic moment. Psst. I'll bet that's him. Take it off. What is that, a cocker spaniel? That's not him. Sure. They may have fought like brothers at times. Why, you imbecile. Leave the imbecile alone. But they always had what was most important. Each other. Our apple pie's fine. Take custard for mine. Oh, custard! Sweetly! <laughs> and now everything is all Jake. Oh, it's all Jake. For the Stooges, things always worked out in the end. But that doesn't mean it couldn't get a little baffling along the way. I'll show you what I mean. This next poll winning clip features one of their greatest routines. Check it out. That I and had the esky tesky. What did you put sack? Hamdale bendale. You got some slick chicks? Oh, a wolf. Rasbanya shati benefuchi. A chili benecharonji. Paraniki mahi, huh? I'd like to see some babes myself. Me too. Stay tuned. Your pick for the all-time favorite moment is coming right up. <laughs> Here on the 75th anniversary of the Three Stooges. Behind me you see Professor Benito Botticelli, head of the archaeological group that uncovered these priceless Greco-Roman antiquities, which you see here. I'm going to ask Professor Botticelli to show us one of their prized possessions an ancient Etruscan vase, which is irreplaceable and valued at over $300,000. Professor Botticelli! 